Hey everybody, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. Thank you so much for coming here and joining me on this Wednesday. Hey, what's up? How you doing, Willie? Good to see you, my friend. How are you today? And what I'm going to do right now is going to continue setting up, guys. Let's see. Okay, going to go to my videos. And there is part three. So, so far, everything's looking pretty good. Okay, and how's the sound, Willie? The sound okay? Let me just darken this up a bit, see how that looks. If it looks a little bit better, there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, okay, I think I like the way that looks as far as the color. Hey, how you doing, Wendy? Good to see you. So cool. So, the... My W people always show up first. <laughs> so what we're going to do initially is we'll just go ahead and we'll set up with the... Um, let's set up and put in our light mixture. So, yeah, I always like to start the day with the light mixture just to get acclimated with everything. Take my artwork and put it aside. And I'll just show you how quickly. Now the airbrush I'm using is the Extreme Patriot Arrow by Badger. I think it's the best airbrush in the world. Uh, dollar for dollar. It blows everything else out of the water. And this is my go-to airbrush, which I use probably 90% of the time, if not more, I would say. Hey Paris, how are you? Good to see you. So glad you can make it. So haven't seen you here in a while, so I'm so happy you're here. Hey Bill, how's it going? How's everything? Good to see you, my friend. So Bill just ordered the uh, the paint mixtures, uh, the ink, airbrush ink mixtures, and I just finished his uh, dark mixtures today. And they will be shipping out tomorrow, which is very exciting. So thank you, Bill, for purchasing my ink mixtures, my Airbrush India ink. So that is very exciting. Oh, that might be a problem on your end. A lot of times, if you're on wireless Paris, you'll see sometimes that uh, it does freeze up from time to time. So I hope that gets resolved. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, what I like to do, is I open up my Pure Ref. That is P-U-R-E-R-E-F. It's a really great software. Now I just got to find, where did I put her? Where is it? Let me see. Okay, just got to find where I put her. Now the problem with Pure Ref a lot of times is that when you minimize it oh here we are i found it you, you can't you have a hard time finding it there we go okay now we're cooking with gas oh thanks bill thank you very much and so many of my ink flingers have purchased my inks and you know i just really appreciate it you know appreciate the trust and everything and so it's so cool okay so right now we're going back into uh, the light mixture, even though we should go into the medium mixture. But when you're starting, you know, after not painting all day on this particular uh, work, what I will always do is always recommend start with the light mixture, almost like warming up as if you were a pitcher, you know. You don't want to face your first batter cold. You want to draw some pitches, some practice pitches. So... That's what we're going to do, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken some of these values right over here. And right now I'm probably maybe about three inches away from the surface. There we go. I'm just going to probably come in and start painting some of this these mid-tones that I see. And then the same over here, it's a little bit darker as we come up. 
And what I like to do is when I'm painting the forehead, I like to try and establish the anatomy of the forehead because the forehead, hey Tom, good to see you. How are you, my friend? The forehead can be this sort of, you know, you know, just this looking plain, you know, this form, this sort of shapeless, smooth sort of form. And that's one of the things I always want to fight against. So we're just going to just get relaxed again with this image. Think of it like this in a sense. Oh, so uh, Paris says, what is your opinion using gouache in the airbrush? I've never done it, Paris. Uh, but as long as, as you can uh, dilute it, where it is probably very watery, and can go through the airbrush, let's say like the ink is, and that would be fine. But I don't know too much about it, Paris. To uh, I don't have any experience with it. Have you tried it before? Or are you thinking about, hey, Brad, how's it going? Good to see you. How are you, my friend? Now, as you know, I always use a freehand shield as much as as I need, you know, and one of the things uh, that I would definitely use it for would probably be to maintain some of the hard edges around these little beads in her hair. There we go. And as you know, perpendicular, not parallel, is always the best way to do it. You know, it definitely could. Uh, now, Brad said he used gouache once, and all he can say is that my Tim's inks are easier to figure out. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, you got the shield. Fantastic. How you feeling, Wendy? I know you said earlier you weren't feeling well. I hope you're feeling better. Now, one of the things that I always recommend is never be in a hurry. Always take your time. Never a rush. And you see everything looks on the dark side. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear, but I'm glad you're feeling a little bit better. And let's reiterate some of these tones here. Now, like I said, coming in with the light mixture, you know, this whole painting in parts one and two was just the light mixture. And we're gonna re we're gonna introduce the medium mixture later today, but right now I just want to just get comfortable. Now, how's the picture? Could it be lighter as far as the value? Should I make it a bit lighter, or is it a good, a good value right now on, on the screen? That is. Now, the thing is with this, you can see how this eye, the whites of the eye, although are in white, are a lot brighter than on this eye, of course, because this is in shadow. So you always got to, you always need to stay with that rule. What's in shadow is always going to be darker than a car, corresponding trait on the, the light side. Now the more that we develop, the more that we'll move around a lot more and gauge the value against other values within the painting. Now what's really interesting uh, is that you'll see the cast shadow from these beads here on her head is much is darker 
than the eyebrow. So we can just establish that. And just little things like that are very important just to keep yourself aware of what's happening and what the relationships are between the values. Oh, I hope your mom feels better. Uh, Paris, I hope your mom feels better. And Brad, thank you so much. I appreciate that, sir. Consider parts one and two as sketching and part three through five or six, depending how long it takes, is more uh, going in and starting to add detail. Just a little bit of a corner of the mouth there, just comes out just a bit. Remember, the one second rule is going to keep you from going off on your own. You don't want to go off on your own. And, oh, you're welcome, Paris. Now, what I like to do is when you cut the, uh, the paper, you know, the color line, the uh, color line paper by Canson, you're always going to have some scraps, and I use that just to make sure. Now you want to have your make sure that your lines are good because you want to make sure it's on the same kind of paper because then you can see exactly uh, if it's reacting the way you want it to. Because remember, everyone knows when you're working in anything on airbrush, how the airbrush works on different papers is totally different. <laughs> Brad says, when he's off on his own, he's in bad company. <laughs> That's funny. Pretty soon we're going to go in with that medium mixture. But you'll know, you'll know like when you start working and you're working on relative values and then you start seeing like okay I pretty much have everything painted in that's when you realize okay it's time to go into the medium mixture you were almost there now whenever I look at a painting I always ask myself okay what am I ignoring what is something where I could actually give more attention to that I haven't so that's always a good indication of where you need to paint next. So I would say right over here is where I need to paint next. Just some, and if you stay with the one second rule. Now the inks I'm using are my ink, uh, Airbrush India inks. And the Airbrush is the Patriot, the Extreme Patriot Arrow by Badger. I modified the trigger and I also modified a few other things on this. Now if anyone's interested in purchasing this, there's a link in the description for the airbrush. And if you use the code uh, Timothy PSA, you get 10% off and I think that's over $10 now. So that's pretty cool. So it's a good way to save some money. There we go. And just continue to move around, keep yourself honest. When I work on something like this little, like sort of fold of her cheek here, just put a little edge there, not too much, just to really get a feeling of her cheek. A lot of subtlety going on in different values, so don't be in a rush, you know, Rome isn't built in a day. 
take your time. Remember, you can always slowly build up, but if you go too dark, then you went down the wrong path. If you're going, think of it like this. If you're walking slowly in the right direction, you're still getting closer. But if you go too fast and you pass where you have to go, then you got to turn, then you have to turn back or if you get off course. So slowly in the right direction is always the best way. You might not get there as fast as speeding through it, but your chance of making horrible errors are a lot less. Okay, over here we have some things going on with her hair. So let's see if we can just, just indicate some things here. Nothing too crazy. Okay, very cool. All right, so, and I do see there's some area in the necklace. I'm not going to worry about that because that in, involves more drawing. So we can definitely come back to that. What I want to do is work on larger areas and just sort of uh, get to the next stage and show everyone what I do to go from the light mixture to the medium mixture. And I want to stress how important it is to realize that it took, this is hour number five to go from the light mixture to the medium mixture. So there was no rush, right? I wasn't speeding through it. I wasn't in a hurry to go into the media mixture just yet. And why the medium, why the light mixture? Because when you're working lightly, you're not, you're not at the point of no return. You can sketch and still not have, if you're going much darker, a lot of things would sort of be much more difficult to to fix so let's say if I was going this dark over here this dark let's say over here in the face or something like that I wouldn't have a lot of wiggle room but now that I am going much lighter I do have a lot of wiggle room so I can worry about shape for longer and then build value so that's important is that you worry about the shape first and then you can build value as you go. I think that's a better route. So let's start to just shape some of the light patterns in our hair. Nothing too crazy, but just establish. And using the one second rule keeps you honest and keeps you really paying attention. Anything you put down, you want it to help your future, future uh, painting. You want it to be part of the progress, not something that you would have to correct. Someone once said, what's the most important thing when learning how to airbrush or to, to paint or whatever? And that is to just do it as much as possible and at least a little bit every day. And that's where the learning, that's when the, you know, the connections are made where you're like, oh, I see it, you know, because you're going every day. Eventually those connections will just happen and you'll start to see things a lot quicker and that makes a big difference. So a little bit of a value over there. Just calm that down a little bit. Okay, so even though I just put the light mixture in, I'm just gonna dump it out. And so when you're going from, uh, from the light mixture to the medium mixture, you don't have to clean out the cup because the lighter color is not going to affect any residual lighter color is not going to affect the darker color however the opposite is true if you have the dark medium in there and then you decide okay i want to go to the light light mixture then you would definitely have to clean out the cup and flush it with a little bit of water so now we're just going to take my medium mixture right here as you can see 
and we're just going to put this in to show you how quick it is to go from one to another. No mess, no fuss. So we'll put a little bit in. And it's very rare that you use what you don't need. So these mixtures really last pretty long, which is really a plus. Okay, so now we're going to the medium mixture. So when I go to the medium mixture of Synex, I always start at the beginning, where we started at first, which is usually what is the focal point of the painting. And to me, the focal point of money, most portraits are the eyes. So we're just going to return back to her eyes. We're going to start with this one right here. Just darkening those values off a little bit. side we're just going to quickly move on over to her other eye pretty dark over here pretty much one shape and as we work things get a little more specific and then we can refine our our drawing a little bit and you want to make sure that you load that air pressure and just control your distance and keep moving and then you'll definitely not have the spidering and the one second rule so yes there's a lot of things to juggle but once you get used to that that cadence then it's just gonna all come together So one of the things about working in India Ink, like, Tim, why do you have this channel? You're working with India Ink and that's it, you know, you're not working with anything else. Is because what I want to teach is the fact is that you can gain control of this crazy thing called the airbrush. And that's basically one of the reasons why I really started uh, this channel in earnest was that I wanted people to regain control or have control for the first time in the airbrush because nothing's more sad than seeing someone frustrated and they just can't get this thing to work and it's just no one's teaching them about about distance and also no one's helping them mix it to the proper viscosity or thickness of the ink remember the airbrush was made for india ink it wasn't made for acrylic it wasn't made for anything else inks and dyes that was the reason why acrylic came way later and it's just too thick for the airbrush and uh, right now the paint industries are doing what they can trying to force the acrylic but in reality it's it's really not good you know it's not good for the airbrush not good for the artist Now what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm getting a proper, proper flow here. Just always double check, make sure your airbrush is working 100%, especially when you come in to, there we go. So just making sure that everything is perfect, especially when I'm coming in for tight detail like this. So you see, when we're going with the, the medium mixture, things start to darken pretty quickly. Now there's an opportunity to start to put some of the lights in the darks, meaning that, you know, it's not just this one value, that there's different values within those value shapes. So you see 
maybe once you start darkening one area, other areas just sort of immediately start to darken up because you're looking at relative value. So, of course I didn't... Oh, so Willie says, everything airbrush seems to be for the custom car stuff. That is so true. Uh, and I agree, and I think that's wrong because there's a whole other world out there of artists who are using it, not just for cars. And not just for the, you know, what people in the custom world like, you know, we all have our likes and dislikes as artists, right, Willie? Uh, now, Paris says, what are the illustration paints made out of? Well, they're mainly acrylic, but I think it, with the illustration paints, is they have a lot of different, uh, their binders are much more loose. So that's why when it dries, it, it's not so tight onto the paper that you can erase it. So it is a type of acrylic. I used to speak with a lot of the chemists over there at Golden Paints, and they would tell me that there are things that you can do to even Golden Paints to loosen the binder and to give it more more volatility as far as erasability and and things like that after it dries but you gotta with anything with acrylic it will eventually bind to the surface so you have to make sure that you erase that in a timely manner you can't leave it for a week and expect it to have the same ability to be erased uh, as the first hour you painted it and Drew told me that too. Drew Blair, that is. So as you see, we're just darkening things up, and I am not even going dark as I sh as I will eventually. But you see, we're just slowly building up. There's no time, you know. There's no uh, time. There's no time constraints. We we can take our time. But we can see, like, once we start darkening this up, I want to stay with the features, and I want to stay uh, on on her forehead there. Let me make sure that I'm in focus. That's always important, right, guys? Let's see. Yeah, I think we're pretty much in focus, so that's good. Okay, so let's move down to her nostrils and her nose. That would be cool. Okay, now I am very well tuned you want to make sure that your airbrush is feeling good and so that's always important just darken it up a little bit and we have the eraser let's not forget that Remember, a lot of times, to describe the form is not the form itself, but the form adjacent to it will describe the form. So sometimes the nostril is described by what's around it, as opposed to the nostril itself. And of course, the one second rule, which is look for a second, then paint for a second, will really help you to see that in action. Now with the medium mixture you got to be a little bit more careful because what you put down is much darker and you just want to take your time and you don't want to uh, go too dark. Once you got go too dark then, then you got to start going backwards. So remember go slowly towards your goal rather than having to go backwards. Now, you can say, well, why not go really fast and then go backwards, right? So why not go really dark and then just lighten it? Because we're talking about cleanliness. We're talking about mastering the medium. So if you want cleanliness, if you want it to look like it's painted with uh, confidence and, 
and just looking like it's been done all at once, then you, you want to do it where you take your time. Okay, so you see just these little things we do here will go a long way. Now, I want that, all that's in shadow, but there's still a lot of light. So I'm going to be about five inches away, and I'm just going to dust that. So I maintain that, right? So that's very important. Okay, so we're going to stay in her face. So, in your face. No, not like that. <laughs> but we're going to stay working on her face. And so let's go ahead and let's darken her hair. Okay, we're going to use our freehand shield and of course perpendicular and not parallel. Now remember you have to wipe off your freehand shield. Oh wow, so Brad says he took five times more uh, fixing a piece. He started before taking lessons from me because uh, he was too gung-ho to go too fast. and. You know, and Brad's doing really well, yes. He is studying with me, and we are working on that, you know, having that patience and everything. And he's doing great with it. And that's what it is, you know. It's, you know, a lot of people, when they say, well, how long does it take you to do a portrait? And I'm like, well, this one took me two weeks. And they're like, oh, my God, how come it's taking so long? It's not that it's, okay, it's not that it's, you can't do it one, two, three, but the process, that's it. Because you're working with paper, right? And you're working with liquid on paper and you have to watch out to make sure that you don't, uh, don't ruin the paper, don't ruin the texture. So there's a lot of different variables that are in the way of just going in and trying to get it done as quick as possible. Wow, when, yeah, well, Wendy uh, was doing a commission, and that came out amazing. Let's look at here. So I do see that it does come in her hair there. So I am happy with that. Just want to make sure I had that correct. Now, as you see, I'm going to darken her hair, and that's going to lighten these shadows over here. You'll see that. So... Remember, this looks really dark right now only because of what was next to it was very, very light. And we'll take our time with our freehand shield. There's never any rush. When you're doing perpendicular, you have a lot more control. And a lot of times you're not going to find that edge just perfectly. Uh, a lot of times you're going to have to crawl along the surface, and I say that a lot too. I guess those are my Timisms, right? You guys all know them. So guys, uh, how many people are in the uh, room right now? Just curious. See how many visitors we have this week. And remember, whenever we do on this side, we definitely have to do on the other side. And 10, okay, not bad, not great, but not bad. Thanks for that, Willie. Always remember when you are, thanks Paris and thanks Wendy. So when you are further away, you're gonna have very smooth gradations and it's gonna get lighter. 
when you are closer, you're going to have sharper lines, more detail, and it's going to be darker. So just remember that, you know, you don't always go by air pressure, but distance is a very important variable. There are so many different variables when painting an airbrush to get a good flow, to get a smooth gradation, to get a nice dark. So all those different factors you really have to take into account. So right here, this is a very soft edge, even though, so I'm not going to use a freehand shield. So you want to ask yourself, do I use a freehand shield? Is that, is that, is that going to get me to the realism that I want right away? Or is it best to just be a little further away and get some of the fuzzy, fuzzy quality, right? Soft edges. So those are things to worry about. So as you see, deepening things up, other areas are lightening up and we're getting sort of, uh, you know, a feeling of light and what light is doing here. So I know that we have to get a nice hard edge, but not all over. So you see right here, it's pretty soft edge, right? Nice soft edge right here. So we're not worrying about the edge here. But then right here, so I'm going to come closer. So I don't always have to have a freehand shield to get the edge I want. Sometimes I can achieve that just with distance. So you see how it was further away to get softer. And then I wanted a hard edge, so I came close. And then I want a soft edge again, so I'm going to be farther away. So you see how, how just, just painting like an airbrush artist, you know, like mastering the medium to have the medium do what you want it to do, but also doing what the medium wants to do. It wants to go soft edge, so utilize that, right? Get that. And then when uh, you want to have a hard edge, then you can use freehand shield and frisk it to really, really do that like no other medium can. Now here, we look at the relative value here. So we look at the hair here, and then we look at this value. They're the same. So if I'm gauging the values and I'm saying, hey, this is the same, not on the sleeve, but right on the side of her breast there. So we have to get this value. So that's why bringing it together is so important. So let's make that happen. And we have a nice hard edge here, so we're going to use our freehand shield. And like I said, this is just a medium mixture, so we're not in the dark mixture yet. Everything's going to be dark. I like to think that, you know, with this technique, you're pretty much doing the painting three times. Oh, Paris, take care. It was great to talk to you. So glad you got the shield. And uh, I hope you have a great night. And I hope your mom feels much better, Paris. Email me. Let me know she's doing better. So this is going to darken this value here. It's actually going to bring her arm forward. And that's another thing you want to do. You want to constantly bring things forward and push things back. Give a real feeling of, of depth, you know, as if you're lucky enough to sit right in front of Jean Tierney here. So as I want it a lot more of a smoother gradation, you'll notice that I increase the distance of the airbrush to the paper. Now we're going to get darker, so it's important to, uh, you know, take your time and to uh, realize that this is not it. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but be as perfect as you can. Willie says he needs to make a shield out of something absorbent. 
because he always forgets to wipe. Oh, that's right. So Willie, yes. So that's sort of a habit you really want to try and, you know, galvanize, you know. It's not easy because, yes, because that does really ruin one's day is, you know, transporting some of that ink onto other areas of your painting you don't want it on. Oh my God, that is horrible. There we go. So you see we're establishing this value and as we're doing that we realize that we can actually work on this side a little bit cleaner. Also the closer you are to the surface naturally there is overspray. Now there are times, good lesson, so I always want to tell you what happens when things go right and what happens when things go wrong. So let's see what, what happens when I'm pressing down and I'm not pressing back and uh, ink comes out. So two things, first thing could be is you have a little bit of tip dry and then what I like to do is just loosen the chucking nut and press down the air and pull back the needle and a lot of times that will fix it but we'll see if that actually fixed it if it doesn't then it's a little deeper problem and we want to make sure that uh, the needle is okay see now 99 times out of 100 that will fix the problem unless the problem is a little bit deeper but you see how you know it's good that i went ahead and and had shown you how to uh, fix the problem because it's going to happen to you i don't care who you are or how long you've been painting that's going to happen to you Now, we're just going over here, then we're going to come over here. Now, remember what I said, this is the medium mixture, the dark mixture has to come over this as well. But we're just going to build that up. Now, someone once said to me, well, Tim, why don't you just, since, uh, you know, India ink will just get darker and darker each time you go over it, right? It just will build up. Yes, but we are working on paper so it can only take so much moisture right so that's something to think about so i'm just going to while i'm talking to you i'm going to make sure that everything is perfect with the airbrush There we go. Now it's doing exactly what I want it to do. Okay. Very cool. So, Willie, you did it twice, huh? Oh, man, that's rough when that happens, right? It's because you, you feel upset because it was such a small thing, right? It was very avoidable. So, yeah, that is very, uh, very frustrating. So as you see, I'm evening this out. See how now these values are very close? So now let's move on this side. Everything we do here, we're going to come over here. Then we'll bring this down. But our focus is always on her hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure. Now, I'm going to take our freehand shield here. And we're going to work on this 
part of her jawline, perpendicular. So as you guys know how much I Hey, what's up, Mike? Good to see you. Better late than never, my friend. So glad you're here. How you feeling? I think last week you said that you were, it was very hot in your studio area. So now see how we're just balancing it out, right? We're coming in and putting the darks where they have to be. We can do the darks up here afterwards, but sort of working around. And that's, that's when it's really important to go from the light mixture to the medium mixture is sort of start to bring things even more into balance. And as Willie uh, noted, we got to make sure that we keep this uh, keep this freehand shield clean, wipe it off, right? Because we don't want to move it. We don't want to move paint or ink to an unwanted area. Hey Gloria, how are you? Good to see you. How's everything? So cool to see you, Gloria. I know Wendy's always glad when you're here because she says there's not enough estrogen here. And I'm glad you're here, Gloria, as always. And here's a good opportunity to go ahead and just get some of these darker values in here. So I went to the supermarket today and, you know, even though things are a little bit different, you know, it seems like, you know, things are opening up and everything, I really feel that uh, things are not changing as much. I think everyone is still very afraid. You know, everyone had their masks and the social distancing. It was still very much the same. Do you guys all find that when you go to the stores? It just seems like... Even though the government's like, yeah, everything's okay in the New York, New Jersey area, I don't think we're buying it, right? And so Mike says, Tim, have you seen the color version of that image? She has a purple top on. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I got to see the color version, definitely. Jean Tierney is just this amazing, gorgeous woman. Oh, my goodness. Just this timeless beauty. I can never get tired of painting her. So Gloria, have you gone to Aldi's lately? Now, uh, as when, oh, Willie says he's afraid it's going to come back, and I think that's true. I honestly feel that, you know, the virus doesn't know that we're opening up. And I don't think things have changed, you know? And I think that's what's scary. And... You're right, Willie, and... Oh, Costco, yes. I gotta go there, but I don't have a car anymore. Now, Costco has really good chicken. Oh, well, thank you, Gloria. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Jean Tierney's just an amazing, amazing... 
looking person. She just looks modern, right? That's what's amazing about her. Like she could just like step out of a movie today. But you see how once I darken this area, then this area, then that area, how it all sort of moves around. See, I'm always checking to make sure that ink is not coming out when I'm just pressing down. So Tone says, when you can visit someone in the hospital, and I think, yes, exactly, Tone. That's a good point, my friend. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to get too involved in detail. That comes later. But I want to work on the big shapes. And I know I tell this to my students, and they're like, what are you talking about, Tim? But really, that's what we want to. We want to sort of squint with our eyes. And when we squint with our eyes, we can really start to see, uh, you know, the big picture, you know, the large shapes. And we want to keep those large shapes going. Okay, so I'm at a medium mixture. That's good. So let's go ahead and go back and put in some medium mixture here. And don't fill it to the brim. Halfway is fine if you're going to be working, you know, for an hour at least. Halfway will be fine. Uh, if not, you could put only a couple of drops in and you'll be fine if you have a gravity feed airbrush. Now, so we have to continue over here. Now, this is really fuzzy over here, really soft edge. So I'm going to be close. So I want to control that edge, right? So I'm going to be close. I'm going to bring this down. Now, uh, Willie says, can you go outside, can you go inside the banks? Just about everything is open but the banks. Don't understand why. Very interesting, right? And I think my bank is open. Some branches, I have a Chase Bank here in New Jersey, and they're open, but I haven't gone in there. Now, so this has to stay pristine, which is her hand there. So we don't want to get any kind of overspray or anything in there. So we're going to cover it up with our freehand shield. And we'll just do that. See that? So, so important. Mass, that's why not open. Oh, I understand. Oh my God, mass. That makes sense, right? How could, yeah, that's actually kind of funny, but not funny at the same time. I never thought of that. That's quite logical, but that's something I didn't even, didn't even come to my mind. How can you tell a customer from someone sticking up the bank, right? Same thing here, just you want to keep this clean and you're going to crawl along and see how I'm wiping. Yeah, Gloria, what you been making lately? And you just make, so I thought that was See right there, I thought that was a uh, ink, but it was actually a pencil line. So whew, that was close. Okay, so let's continue here. Just gonna crawl along the surface. So they closed down my gym, guys. So I was uh, going to this gym and I loved it. And it was like, it was my social life. It was me getting healthy. And they closed it. They closed down my 24-hour fitness. So now I don't have anything. I don't have my gym. I don't have my library. So that was a real bummer. 
Oh man, grilling, that's pretty cool. So that's cool, Gloria. Have you been grilling any kind of fish or anything like that? Like like salmon or something like that? I hear salmon on the grill is good. I never had it. But it, do you make that as well, Gloria? Oh, chicken and shrimp. What about the chicken with the beer up the butt? Remember? <laughs> oh no, I think everyone gained five pounds, Gloria. I feel like I gained a hundred pounds because I haven't been working out, but I did decide to uh, go to Planet Fitness. So when it opens, there's Planet Fitness Gloria, right where the Stop and Shop is, uh, you know where Pathmark used to be by that Stop and Shop. There's a twenty. There's a there's a Planet Fitness there. Just opened up, and it hasn't opened up to the public yet. But I'm gonna do that. And so for ten dollars a month, that's not gonna be too bad. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah. So I'm. That's the one thing that I'm gonna be doing, and you know, taking it some risk in life I'm going to be going to the gym because that is just healthy and just makes me feel good about myself when I don't work out I feel like you know and I feel like I look like you know so Willie says we must have strange chicken in New Jersey oh that's wonderful Gloria oh definitely You had a lot of birthdays this week. You had, you had Brian and Yvonne. Uh, I love, I love June for that reason because both of their, both of my, two of my favorite people have birthdays. You know, Brian and Yvonne are two of my favorite people. As you are, Gloria and DJ. Wow, 28, unbelievable. I remember, so that means when I first met you guys, so 2007, 13 years ago, so he was 15 years old when I first met him. Isn't that something? I know you guys so long. But it doesn't feel like a long time. I did see that. That's pretty wild. Now that's pretty cool. Especially for the winter time, that would be wild. So as you see, guys, as um, darkening things, I'm setting up now for the midtones. So you see the midtones will actually go darker. So that's pretty cool. Now, I do see a little bit of overspray, but I don't want to use something small like this because it would break it up so i'm going to use my kneaded eraser and that should do pretty well and it does it gets rid of that overspray in the event that it doesn't get it you know we can go ahead and use a slightly more aggressive eraser now when i say aggressive i do mean that loosely uh, here's a pink pearl and you could use that not aggressive by any means but it's more aggressive than the needed eraser always use the needed eraser that is perfect for the job so and always go from soft to light to determine that so don't go and use like the faber castell at first and tear into the paper when you could have done the job with a very soft eraser you know now oh so uh this is cool so bill says which video should i watch to learn more about the inks that he purchased. Yes, it's a video that I did of Gloria Vanderbilt. And I probably did that, I would say about four or five months ago. I'll send you the link. And that one really goes step by step with that, you know? 
So have you gone? Have you guys gone into the hot tub, Gloria? That's pretty cool. And does it get really hot, or is it just kind of, kind of warm, or something like that? Oh, so yes, so, so it's good that, you know, we know what we have to fix, right? So, if I was gonna come in and get this really aggressive eraser, and now what happens is, and the reason why is we would tear into the paper more than we have to. Right? We don't want to tear into the paper unless we absolutely have to. So you see, I'm cleaning up that overspray really nicely. And uh, we can just not tear in the paper at all. So everything has to be, wow, 104 degrees. That's cool. That's pretty neat. Oh my goodness. So interesting. I would love to have a hot tub. Um, I just got to wait till the Hooters waitresses are working again so I can invite them. And let's see. Okay, so you see now I cleaned that up, which is really nice. I worked on up there. And then we can see right here, okay, we need to darken this up here. You see, because we have to make sure we get the large shapes together. Like if we squint our eyes and not see detail. Still looking for a pool. Wow, that's going to be cool. It's like Club Med. That's really so neat. So you see the freehand shield uh, would be, <laughs> yes, with the Hooters waitresses, that would be a real hot tub. <laughs> Alas, only in my dreams, Willie, only in my dreams. Just see right now we're just getting a nice sense of the value relationships. No detail whatsoever. <laughs> Me and Willie are in the same boat. Ooh, look at this here. So one second rule. What was Tim thinking to have this avoided area? So let's go ahead and paint this in. There we go. <laughs> Brad, that's pretty funny. But I can't wait to, uh, can't wait to uh, see the pool. That's going to look amazing, Gloria. Unbelievable. Are you going to get the same size pool as before? So we should have an ink flingers pool party one day when there's a vaccine and we're not going to kill each other by saying hello. Right? So, you know, I hope the vaccine will come probably within within the next six months, you know? <laughs> so Gloria told Brad to watch himself. That's pretty funny. Okay, so now we got to ask ourselves, <laughs> she will have to kill DJ. <laughs> That's right, DJ's on thin ice. Okay, so now we're going to go into the mid-tone since we went ahead and darkened this up. Yeah, that would be great to have a get-together. We really should. We've been hanging out now for years, right? Wouldn't that be fantastic? 
So Mike says you always wanted a hot tub to use for degreasing engine parts. <laughs> I don't think that's quite the intended purpose, my friend. So let's go ahead and we'll use our freehand shield. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna darken this area a bit more. <laughs> just a bit more. And I'm probably about three inches away, guys. And you see how you know, once I darken that other area, you realize that you have to darken this area. And once we come in with the dark mixture and darken this further, then this will darken as well. But also, we want to think about the three dimension of the forms, right? We want to feel that that's a form and not just this flat shape, you know? So that's really important. <laughs> Mike would use it for engine parts. Always pay attention to that one second rule. That's going to keep you balanced. And you see, just darkening that is very important. There we go. And now, where can we see that? Okay, so we did that. What else needs to get darker? And let's take a look. So I'm going to take a look at my red ends and transmission cases, too. Wow, pretty cool. Now, I do see it slightly darker right here, right? So let's go ahead and just make that slightly darker. Just at the edge there. Still doing the one second rule, I mean the uh, perpendicular and not parallel. Just be only because it gives us more control. Now, all of these things that I'm doing is also very important because it has its basis in just regular drawing and painting and that's where I learned to see so if you ever want to go into pastel or oils or just graphite you can use the principles that I that I talk about here and be just fine and hit the ground running in that new medium so you know the one second rule applies to everything Redheads and brunettes. <laughs> That's pretty funny, there, uh, Brad. Okay, so you see, now if we look and we squint our eyes, we can definitely see the light and dark patterns, and that's what we want. And so now might be a good time to see where we could get a little more subtle midtones now that we have the darks. And looking at her arm here, I think we could extend this dark further in. Just, and I'm increasing my distance as I get closer to the front of her biceps. And the reason being is it gets lighter, so I can actually control the value by distance. And I think that's a much more cleaner look than, you know, pressing down more or something. By using it with distance, you're getting much more beautiful gradations. Wow, 1937 International D2 pickup with a small block Chevy Turbo Trans. Oh my goodness. Does that have a rumble seat? Now, I don't know what I'm talking about. I just know that those my mom used to talk about having a rumble seat in the back of a car. So I'm just going to put in some detail, this little insignia there. 
just to bring that to life a little bit more. And then over here, I can do a light dusting because this part of the design is darker. So even the lights are going to be darker. So I'm just going to do a dusting over everything here. And that's going to help it to turn by doing that dusting, making it darker here. And I'm a good four inches away. Perfect. And so that's good. And let's let's see if we can darken this up. But remember, this is not as dark as this. So we want to make sure that we darken this up just slightly, but not to the point where it competes with this. We want to bring that shoulder forward. You want to make sure that we don't oversaturate the surface. That's very important. So everyone stuck home, has anyone been watching any amazing show lately that they highly recommend? Like on Netflix or, or anything like that? Or a book or what have you? Wow, so Willie says it's amazing how it looks and this is only part three. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's going quick, right, Willie? It just seems like it has its own little life, right? It's doing its own thing. There we go. Just doing its own thing, right? And we're just going with it. But yeah, part three, it, it really sort of, we sort of hit the ground running with this one. And as you see, I like to move around, you know. Uh, oh, <laughs> Willie says there's a good live stream on Wednesday night. <laughs> That's good to hear, my friend. Thank you. So, uh, Tone has been watching Law and Order. Wow. I always remember that, dun dun, you know, that noise. It's so iconic, right? That one thing in the beginning. Is that lower in order, that dun-dun? One second rule. So important because we don't do that, we're going to pay the price. I'm just going to bring this down, increase my distance as I go further. When it gets lighter, I'm just going to increase my distance. And now we have some little darker little triangle areas. Let's see if we can do it without the freehand shield because it's not really that hard of an edge. Let me get my glasses because this is like, this is a very small figure, you know, it's uh, on eight and a half by 11. So these little areas are probably like a quarter of an inch. So you see, we can we can really get uh, very nicely detailed with this, and we don't need the freehand shield. We don't want to get too dark. We want to really pay attention to the value. Asking ourselves, is this value lighter than this? Yes. Darker than this? Yes. So that's how you find where that value is, just relatively speaking. 
Yeah, of course, everything's going to get darker when we come in with the dark mixture. So when you fade, you want to increase your distance. You want to paint in three dimensions. It's, I can't stress it enough. So what you do on this side, you're going to do on this side over here. I love this little insignia, and uh, it, I don't want the painting to be about the insignia, but I wanted to attack something I normally would kind of shy away from in much of the painting, and then eventually get to it, but I really wanted to attack it, and this is, you know, sort of that, you know, I really wanted to know that there was some difficulties or things that might be a little bit harder than other areas and I wanted to go right for it and not to be uh, intimidated by any detail. When we come with the white pastel it's really going to sing. And that's what we want to do. We want to Maybe I could leave some of this detail for the light mixture because I think it might be getting a little darker than I want it to at this stage. So I'm not going to do too much detail. I'm going to get these major shapes here. That's what I'm definitely going to handle. And I definitely could do that. with the one second rule to make sure that I'm not getting lazy and I could get lazy you know we that's one of the things that happens is we get lazy with detail and we don't want that to happen But it's wonderful with this airbrush and the inks that you can have such control. And, you know, it's not this magical thing. It's something that, you know, with the inks and also this airbrush, a fine-tuned, well-working airbrush, you'll have control that you will just not believe. Some areas over here. So you see we're developing this insignia a little bit better, a little bit better. And like I said, Rome wasn't built in the day, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the insignia. That's something that we can work on. Now there are times where you didn't really get the um, subtleties of the lights and darks within a particular value shape and that's where you just want to go ahead and use your eraser and then you could pretty much do some of the reflected light within there you know do something like that so you know you don't have to be perfect every time you have other tools at your disposal to you know, help you get where you want to go. It doesn't have to. You don't have to hit it on the, you don't have to hit the nail on the head every time. So Willie says he has a hard time with smooth faces. It just doesn't look right or it comes out looking like a porcelain doll. Very good. Uh, that's a very good question. And, and we're going to, I want us to really pay attention to the final part when we come in with the white pastel. I'll be addressing some of that. And I think that will be good for you, Willie, because you'll enjoy it. And I think you'll get a lot from it. So look at that. We're at 1050 already. This, this went really fast so far. I'm surprised how quickly it's gone. Um, 
So, okay, so let's assess the situation, and as we're assessing the situation, let me take this opportunity to drink some water. So I think she's coming out pretty well. And as you can see, we might want to maybe start doing some, some uh, detail here and there. But I think what we could do is I would probably want to go back Oh, what is white white pastel? Yes, so that is you'll see that in the video that I actually use white pastel at the end to just pull out some highlights that just really make it out of this world, you know. And let me see if I could show you a quick example. Let's see. So here's an example of a piece that we're using the white pastel. This is something I did about a year and a half ago maybe even two years ago, and you can see that the use of the white pastel really pulls things forward and sort of just sort of brings it really further to life and you know and that's and that's basically it you know we're working on paper so we have the ability to do things that other mediums can't so why not take advantage of that and so by using the white pastel at the end we can get some beautiful highlights that normally you couldn't do so yeah so that's going to be fun so if you haven't seen that uh yet uh, bill you're going to enjoy that that's going to be pretty cool and but just at the very end do we use the white pastel at the very very end okay so now i'm looking at her and i'm asking myself since i went and came in with the medium mixture to darken some areas up. Where else can I darken some areas to bring it together, to bring it in line? And I think we can probably go a little bit darker in her face. Just a tad bit. But now I can really start to see things, what they are. I could uh, look for the, sh the very subtle shifts in value. Now also looking at this, and you'd be surprised that, you know, even later in the game you might see where your drawing might have gotten a little off, and it happens. But what's really good is to recognize it and still fix it when you can. Now there will be some times where you can't fix the drawing and you just have to live with it. You know, you don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You know, you continue and you just chalk it up as, okay, next time we're going to be more careful. There we go. So I'm going to start darkening some areas because I went ahead and darkened those eyes, remember? So like a pebble on a still lake when it's going to have that ripple effect. So when you darken certain areas, everything else is going to fall in line. It just has to. Otherwise, it won't. And so working on clayboard, yes, you can still use the white pastel. Let me show you uh, something that I did on using white pastel at the end. And I'm not where I want to be yet. This is not done. But as you can see, there's white pastel, and this is on masonite. So yeah, it's definitely possible. And actually, not only possible, but it works really, really well. And so you can get a feeling of, of atmosphere, and, you know. So the white pastel at the end really does start to bring things together. Now this painting's not done, of course, but uh, you can see the direction. And as you can see, this is on wood panel, you know, this is, so, and I, and I put gesso and marble dust on it to get the surface I want, to get the texture I want. Thanks, Tone, I appreciate that. So yeah, this, this is, I don't think there's anything, thank you, Willie, I don't think there's anything uh, as far as India ink that it can. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, Bill. And I don't think there's anything that uh, is limited with the ink. It's waterproof. 
So it makes it pretty much, you can do anything with it. I don't think it has limitations. Uh, I guess that's what I'm really saying. I don't think there's any limitations with the India ink. You can do anything with it. Wow, I can see how this cast shadow comes all the way down. So it's much lighter here because right in here it's getting some reflected light. Little, little details, I think really, really little observations really will bring out her likeness in a much more beautiful way. Now remember, I'm in a medium mixture, so I have to be very careful. Sometimes you'll find yourself doing stuff in the medium mixture that you could be doing much better in the light mixture. And you want to be aware of that. Now right here I'm going to erase, but notice I'm not going to erase now because the ink is still a little bit wet on the surface and you don't want to erase it. So Bill, you're going to be using the ink for the first time. So definitely never erase right away. Give it a couple of minutes and then go in and erase, okay? Because you will tear the paper apart. And this is like 184 pound paper. It's cardstock, but still it it will once you wet it it makes it a lot more volatile to you know be damaged so right here i'm just going to well there's two uh two uh a good question mike mike says if i was going to work use this as an underpainting to work in color would i stop now and that would be on an individual basis. Sometimes I would. Sometimes I would say, you know what, I'll do more of the detail with the color. But I think I would probably, if I went this far, I probably would go further with the, with the ink and then come in with the color. And I, and I have so many paintings that I've used. I've been using India ink as an underpainting for my pastels and acrylic paintings for quite some time now and uh, it's just a natural underpainting it's just in the last year and a half that I started using my India ink paintings as a work of finished work of art in itself so that's the new part so with the underpainting you can go as far as you can but you have to be mindful that when you add value, when you add the color on top of the black and white, you are going to be restricting more light, so you will go a little bit darker. The one thing I would do if I was working uh, this as an underpainting, I would keep the values at least one or two values lighter. So this way when I come in with color, I'll arrive at that value exactly where I want. So that would take uh, a little bit of planning and that would be very important to consider that. And you can see how it erases quite easily. That's a light mixture job over there so I'm not going to come in with the medium mixture. You know, uh, fog cannot climb a tree the way a squirrel can. I could do it with the medium mixture and show off, but you know what? It's best to do it with the best tool in your arsenal. So refrain from being a cowboy and let's just uh, wait for the, the white mix, the light mixture to go in there. Okay, so you see now we're starting to get where we want to be. Value counting is a strange and weird thing for, for, uh, for Mike to understand, he said. Well, value is very, that is like the most important thing in painting portraits. Uh, I would say one of equally important as far as the drawing is value. And value is really important because that's the structure. So, you know, if you can get the value down, then the rest will fall into place. And it's very important to 
to really pay attention to value. Now, in my method, I go with line, shape, value. Line is your contour. Shape are the large shapes as we're working on now. The value of those large shapes, right? The edges of how one value uh, is, re how one value borders with the adjacent value. Meaning, is it a hard edge or a soft edge? That's something, and then you vary those edges. After that's done, so you have the, the edges, and then you have the shapes within the values. Would be like, okay, so you have this value, but you do have the shape of this uh, reflected light within that value. So you see how uh, you bring that together. And so it's so important. Yes, I have. You know, uh, for the past two years, I've entered... Uh, this last this year I entered uh, a painting and I won an award at the Salma Gundy Club on Fifth Avenue in New York City quite a prestigious show and I actually got an award on that I was very happy the year before was a airbrush painting that I did an India ink under painting and did acrylic and that one had an honorable mention so for the two years that I did oh and the year before that Okay, so the year before that, I put in the nude, and that actually won an award too. So three years running into the same show, my airbrush paintings have gotten to a fine art show, meaning that it's not geared for airbrush artists, that they normally would frown on anyone working on an airbrush, but I'm seeing to be breaking that barrier. So that's a good thing for all of us airbrush artists. If we can break that fine art barrier, then I think we'll be okay, you know? Because the art world does, does definitely have an opinion on airbrush art. My opinion is this, it's artwork done with the airbrush as opposed to airbrush art being a medium in itself. That's my opinion. Let me just lighten this up. One value. There we go. Wow, it's 11.03 already, guys. Look at that. Time's flying. So we're going to look for those relative values here. And I'm going to let that dry. Always periodically check and make sure that when you're spraying that ink is not coming out. That's always important to check on that. Because when we're working, we could get involved and not notice it. And that's how you lose some control of your airbrush. See that? Now we're just really starting to make her, her turn in space, right? That her form is three-dimensional. You want to be able to reach out and touch your subject. Or feel like you can. You don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> You know, sometimes uh, I'm the only one to laugh at my jokes, but that's okay. Now, Bill says he loves the airbrush. That's his story, and he's sticking with it. I hear that, Bill. You know, the airbrush is, is something that just, you know, if you love it, you'll always love it, right? It'll become part of you. And those who use it as a tool, they'll like it, but not to the same way those who are just enamored with the medium. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that, Willie. Thank you so much, sir. And I love how, you know, by doing this technique, we just slowly get there without, without a rush, you know, sort of enjoying the trip. I just want to calm down this dark here. I think it's a little crazy over here. And I'm going to leave it alone right now because I think right now this has to get darker and this is going to fall into place. So I'm going to neglect making any kind of weird changes. What I am seeing is just this slight thing right here is that it's a little bit of a dark line. Let's clean this up. 
I want to make sure that I'm getting, don't ever do this, I'm just doing this, but don't have your artwork where you're doing a test. Never do it like that. And I'm just doing it to, just for me, my own advocation. See that? I just wanted to get that little bit of a dark right there as it comes out. So guys, guess what? I am actually 30, 30, 33 subscribers away from 3,000. And many of you, when you uh, first started, you remember before I even hit my first thousand. So this is a record. So I think it's a little more than a year that I actually had a thousand. Now the first thousand took me eight years. And then the second thousand took two years, and now the third thousand has taken a little more than a year. So we are growing, but not by leaps and bounds, and that's good. I think those, anything that is like going to stick around or you know have real um, structure to it, it, things that grow slowly, right? Like a like a redwood tree. So I'm not really looking and saying, wow, it took me all this time to get to 3,000. No, I'm just happy that it's growing at its own pace. And, you know, it's just exciting to see where it's going to go, right? Where's our little channel going to go? Where's our little channel going to take us? And I got to do a state of the channel address because I did it for, I did it for the last two years. I think I'm going to do that pretty soon and just to see where it goes where my life is going, you know, as far as this channel, where your guys' lives are going. And I find that, and I think that's just as important too, you know. What's your airbrush journey, you know? What's that like? Almost thinking about going into the light mixture again, but Let's work on some of these darker areas just a little bit more. Now I decided to keep the background just the paper and I think that's going to give us a feeling of this thing being painted all at once right away. Even though we're taking all this time, right? This is like hour number six. But I wanted to feel like this thing was painted all at once. Just, you know, just totally free and just, and I think you can give that impression by, by having cleanliness, you know? Now cleanliness is probably the next step uh, when painting. I know I haven't heard that much, uh, you know, in art school and everything, but I think cleanliness is something that really should be uh, really thought about when working. If we can keep things clean, I think that's really going to help us. Cleanliness is really crucial. Just to give that work that next level. I think we're achieving a certain amount of cleanliness in this painting, I may dare to say. Now, I don't want to go too dark, so that's why I'm neglecting to work some of this real tight detail. I think we can go with the light mixture. Part of that is that it's only like maybe, how big is her head? Her head from chin to top of the forehead a little more than three inches. So yeah, it's a very small portrait, and we definitely don't want to go dark too early so I have to practice what I preach and sometimes it's important to go back to the light mixture now Willie says uh, to be honest in a selfish way he's glad that it's a small channel but deserve over a hundred thousand easy thank you Willie and I I'm glad that it's a small channel right now too because I get to meet you guys and girls and I think that is worth more than having all those people right so um, I enjoy it. What is it? Uh, you know, 
don't despise the time of small beginnings. And I think that's important, you know? And we have to really embrace things when they're small and really find out, as Willie said, you know, what are the advantages of a small channel? And yeah, so we definitely have that, and that's a good thing. And we can embrace that. So now that we always do something on one side of the head, we always want to make sure that we do it on the other side because we don't want it lopsided, right? We want to create a painting that looks like. Now, remember, on the light side, pretty much the same stuff is happening on, on the dark side, but on the dark side, it, of course, is darker. Not only that, the contrast is always less on the dark side. So you have lower contrast, meaning the values are closer to one another. On the light side, of course, things are lighter, but the value changes are stronger. So that's important. Okay, so we're going to... So you see, we worked on this side, we worked on that side, we're going to go back in. Now let's see if we can just do some fun areas. Let's see if we can work on some of the values in these little pearls here. I'm going to work on the darkest areas right now. So when I darken that up, we realize that we can come darker around. So, but let's work on on those little pearls or what they are. Looks like ball bearings almost. Definitely the one second rule is going to help us out immensely. That's right, the dark side and the light side, the force, right? I guess the force would be the compressor as we hear it. Now that's funny in Star Wars. Just gonna darken around it. then over here as well oh so you see you know with the one second rule I can definitely see where I'm going wrong there we go. and they're really very nondescript these little these little pearls here they're really not going to come together until we come in with the white pastel. Now, in the light side, I think we can definitely uh, come in with the light mixture. And I think, because on this side, you know, it's a little, this on the dark side, so we can really get those rich darks. Now there's some over here, but even here I can see that those pearls are a little bit lighter. So, you know, we don't want to use something that's going to be much more difficult to get those values, those soft values. Now, are there some areas? Oh, the one second rule. Very good question. So, the one second rule is really important, and I'm, sh you know, you're an advanced artist. I know you do it. Uh, maybe you don't call it a name, but you always make sure that you look for a second before you paint for a second and never paint longer than you look. So case in point, if I want to go ahead and hit this little dark area, I'm going to look at my reference for a minute and then I'm going to paint it. Same thing here. I'm going to look at it for a minute, or a second I should say, and then I'm going to paint it. Now what this does, it makes you really look at what you're painting 
and not getting complacent. And so it's sort of like being hard on your own eye. And I think that's so important. So yeah, the one second rule is really crucial, especially uh, when artists are first starting to learn how to paint what they see, because you really have to concentrate on what you're trying to paint. And by having that rule, it keeps you on your toes, keeps us from thinking about our shopping list, about, you know, about what's on TV, or maybe from thinking about, you know, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. So thinking about other things except for what you're painting. And doing the one second rule really keeps your mind in the game. Oh, you're welcome, Bill. I know you're doing something of that sort already. Because uh, if you haven't seen Bill's work, fantastic. So, Bill, you have a website that, that uh, some of us could go ahead and check out. And Bill's actually a fellow New Jersey person. So we're really glad to have you here, Bill. It's so great. Bill does watercolor, uh, airbrush, just some fantastic stuff. So uh, I hope you have a website where we could definitely look at more of your amazing stuff. So we are at the home stretch of this particular painting, which is really exciting. And um, uh, I wouldn't say the home stretch, but we definitely are pretty far. We're going to continue with the medium mixture for quite some time in part four. And then part five is going to have the dark mixture and the white pastel. And then she will be complete, which is amazing. So with the one second rule, you can see I'm really making sure that I'm paying close attention. And also, you always want to keep and make sure that your airbrush is working 100%. So let's see here. So now I want you guys, if you haven't, to download Pure Ref. Pure Ref is an amazing software and it allows you to keep your reference uh, on top no matter what program you're on. And you can enlarge it and make it small. It's just really, just fantastic. So right here, we have her hair. It sort of comes down, sort of tied, and then you can see the back the hair behind. So let's do that perpendicular and not parallel. So you see how we actually did that? That's an important little thing, you know? Uh, yes, it is free. Now when you download it, uh, Willie, it'll say, uh, you know, to give a donation. You can put zero. That's what I did. Put zero and you could use it or you can give a donation. Now, Willie, do you have a regular PC or do you have a Mac? Oh, so Instagram. Okay, cool. So if you guys want to see Bill's stuff, uh, is Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, Bill underscore sneaking underscore airbrush. So cool. So we'll definitely check that out. We'll definitely let you know next week. And uh, we'll have some comments. And I know your work is fantastic. I know everyone else is going to love it. Okay, so we are out of the medium mixture. So with that being said, we're going to go back in with the light mixture. Oh, a PC. So it works perfect for PC. So definitely give that a try. It's pure ref. Let me write it down for you, my friend.
So it's Pure Ref. So I think it's pureref.com. Uh, but if you Google Pure Ref, you'll find it. And it's really great. So, oh, you're very welcome, my friend. So look how fast. So remember, when we're going from medium to light, it does work on Mac. So that's good. Uh, so definitely give it a try, and I think you guys are going to love it. Uh, I use it all the time. So remember when I said that if you're going from the light mixture to the medium mixture, you don't have to because what's in the cup, the light mixture, is going to have no effect on the medium mixture, the residual. But the other way around, the residual medium mixture will have an effect on the light mix you're going to put it in. You don't want to make that light mixture value darker. I work so hard to get the perfect value, we don't want to go ahead and mess that up. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to run some water through this airbrush. That does two things. It will clear out anything that might be in there, right? And then we can just take a rag, like so. And we can just get rid of anything that might be in there. And let's give it another shot of some regular clean water. So this way when we're working with light mixture, we know it's light mixture, right? So we have that confidence that the value we're going to be spraying is exact to what I use and, you know, what you'll be using in this painting and next painting. And that's how you get really comfortable with your control because you're dealing with the same values over and over again as opposed to if you're mixing it on the fly each time you're going to wonder why I'm having a hard time because in initially you're working with a darker value than you normally would be but using these mixtures you don't have that problem so that's pretty cool okay so we were working on her hair here and we just want to reiterate some of this. Now I like working with the medium mixture, especially in more subtle areas, because, you know, it's not going to be so dark right away. And you need that. You need to have that wiggle room. Okay. And then over here, we have a little bit of a darker value. And let's see where else we can... Okay, so we had some subtlety to do right here in her eye here. So let's work on that. So you see how we can really get in there and just do some really nice detail. And yeah, you can do it with the medium mixture. But like I said, a frog doesn't climb a tree as good as a squirrel can. So now that we have that done, we can take our mono eraser and then we can start working on some of that real subtle light here. See that? Just, that really gives her sort of that sultry look. Just lighten this here and then it's come in and darken this. This right there. A little bit of a spider in there. You gotta be careful. So 
So I do like the fact that we're starting to get some of the character in that eye, but we do have a lot more wiggle room by working with the light mixture. So whatever we do on this side, we always got to make sure we pay tree frogs. Very interesting point. So that would be more of an all purpose, right? I like that. Are those the ones that kind of stick? They have like little stickers and they could little suction cups on their feet. So you can see now we're starting to get the attitude that slowly. See, we don't care about likeness. We just care about the process. In worrying about the objectives of what we have in proper time frame, right? So the objective we have now is a little more detail, but not all the detail. So we're not going to go crazy. We're not going to go ahead and fully resolve this painting here in the eye. We're going to let the rest catch up. But as you can see now, wow, all of a sudden, you know, I start to see Gene Tierney a little bit more. Okay, so let's work on some of the eyelash here, eyebrow. There we go. Now, also, you want to squint your eyes. And I always say squint your eyes because frogs are crazy things. <laughs> I lived in Florida for a spell in the uh, 90s. And they were always in our garage. They're very harmless, except for those ones that, you know, have a stinger, but they have, like, poison to them. But, you know, living in Florida, it's hard not to love reptiles. Things are even going to darken up even more next time we come in. We're going to work on some detail, and maybe we'll darken things up a little bit more. So, Mike, have a good night, my friend. It's good to see you. And so cool about those car, uh, those car projects you're doing. So that's very exciting. So Brad says, great show. Uh, she's looking outstanding already. Thank you, my friend. Have a great night there, Brad. Thank you so much. And so thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. And Brad, for the compliments. I really appreciate that. Willie, have a great night. Wow, did this night go by fast, or is it just me? Because it went by really fast, you know? Probably, like, the first time in a week I was not worrying about anything but just art, you know? But that was nice. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, you know, it's always great to have. It did go fast, right? And thanks, Willie, and thank you, Mike, and it did go fast tonight, you know, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing when it goes fast. I mean, we're, we're where we're supposed to be. Things sort of just flow, right? And so, as you see, you know, it's not just the eyebrow, but there's different lights and darks within that eyebrow, right? And so Gene is really coming together. Hey, Tone, thank you so much for coming by. Wouldn't be the same without you, my friend. So glad you're here. Bill, good to see you. God bless. Always important to hang out with good people, and you're just another great person to hang out with. So thank you. You fit right in there, Bill. And so we are just going to work on some of those values. Remember, the value and then the last, which is the value within the shape, right? The shapes within the shapes. That's important. So it's 1130. I always promise you guys two hours. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for uh, helping me to uh, paint Jean with you guys. 
you have any questions, feel free to email me. I hope you have a great night. Stay safe and take good care.